The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the November 15th, the magical, the marvelous Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I, when you and I uh, <coughs> can make that little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there too. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. A bit of a mixed bag out here. The Dow and the S&P are up. The Dow is up 33 and the S&P is up 88 cents. We'll call that flat. NASDAQ is not flat. It's down 42 points. Russell's off 11. Semi's down 10. Tranny's up 16. New York Stock Exchange up just a bit. Gold is uh, off 250. Trading out at uh, 1865. Silver is off 25 cents. Trading at 2509. Lights recruit off 78 cents. Trading out at 80 bucks. Basically almost even Steven. Natural gas found some put in today up about 3% or 14 cents trading at 492. Dollar wise leading the charge out here. It's Mercado Libre up 35 bucks, followed by Equinix up 21, Amazon 19, Rivian Automotive up 15, and Dollar Tree up 15 as well. To the downside, you've got Tesla up 40. CrowdStrike down 35, Booking Holdings 36, Splunk taking a Splunk down 19% or 31 bucks, Upstart Holdings off 23, 8% there as well. Of course, I want to take a look at what you want to look at out here. Let's go take a look at the uh, what's going on in the general markets as we speak right now. We'll begin by taking a look at those daily profile levels. So where are we? What do we have? I'm going to have to really take a look at a couple different sets of charts out here, really to pull it all together. So we'll just simply start with the profile charts. Here's what we know. We know that last week moved lower. The ES mini, the S&P in essence, found support at the bottom of that daily profile. That's at 46.3550. That's a very key level of support. It's slightly bullish in structure, meaning that center is closer to the bottom than it is to the top. Typically, when you see price close above the center, price will make its move up to the top of the profile. So at this stage here, we would say that the ES mini is headed to 47.11. Now, I'm just going to switch. We're going to go back and forth here just to kind of stick with the same chart uh, in essence. So I'm going to go look at the e well. That, that didn't work, did it? I've got these short-term time frame charts. So, uh, Stevie, we'll try to be a little bit smoother here. Now you'll see the daily time frame chart. I just, just want to take a look at the ES Mini. Let's go through it one by one. If you take a look at the ES Mini on Friday, you also had to close above that green oscillator and change line. And so far today, that level is held. And if we get a close above, that's pretty much where we're trading right now. Just, well, I'll give you the exact number. But this will change by, you know, pennies or what have you. It's at 46.76.75 would be the number. We're at 46.78. So close above that level. It's going to add to the idea that the ES mini should go target that 4711 area. Now, the spot volatility is below its 50 day exponential moving average. That would be the final piece of that puzzle. We won't go there right now, uh, but uh, you can trust me on this, that price is trading below that area, which is also another positive or wind at the back of the sales, so to speak, for the S&P 500. Now let's go to the NQ and then we'll switch back. So on Friday, the NQ closed above the top of its profile. Well, I actually I've got its profile on here, 16020. It's really 16105, so either way that works. So what you can see here, right now, the oscillator and change line uh, for the NQ is uh, 16170. 
So a close above 16,170 today will generate a signal for you and I that the NQ is likely to go target its all time high as well. Let's go take a look at the Dow. So the Dow has not been able to close above that oscillator. But first, by the way, all four of these equity future contracts have topping patterns are in place. TD nine counts for the ES, the NQ, and the Dow. And then the Russell 2000 say sell the D point pattern. So not until those levels are taken out do these patterns get negated. But we're trying to understand what is price likely to do in this case here for the ES mini and the NQ. If they close again today above those green oscillator and change line, the message is that price should go at least tag those resistance levels. That is the uh, top of those all time high patterns or those TD nine counts. The Dow is not generating that same signal for us just yet. If price did close above 36,121, that's its current oscillator and change line. That would then that would suggest to move up to the top of its profile, which is not the all time high, which is not the top of the TD nine count. It would be at 36,290. If we take a look at the Russell 2000 for the last several days, price has been has remained above the top of that oscillator or, or, or its oscillator and change, not the top of it, but remained above its oscillator and change line. That is currently printing at, give me a moment here, 20 what? 2406.10. So price closes above that, odds favor price goes back and tests its highs. Well, now I'm going to switch from this chart here, just go back to those market profile charts, see if there's anything else there for us to update you on. In the case of the Russell 2000, a close above that oscillator and change line would suggest a move to 2460 out here, but you can see it's a uh, its profile is slightly bearish in structure, the opposite of the ES mini. So price has gotten up in that resistance zone, which is really between 2425 and 2460. That's a pretty good size resistance zone, but that is the resistance zone for the Russell 2000. So is there anything else here for us to take a look at on the daily charts? I don't think so. What's the bigger picture look like? Because sometimes the daily is just noise. If you're managing your long-term portfolio account, I can guarantee you the daily charts are nothing but noise out here. When we take a look at those weekly timeframes, charts what you're going to see out here are conservative i said conservative a to b equals cd patterns to the upside all of which are basically confirmed now you don't see the a to b equals cd pattern inside the russell 2000 what you see for it for its weekly time frame is that consolidation measured move that would take us into the 2600 area so in the case of the es mini it's target to the upside other than some consolidation measure moves which we can take a look at but the a to b equals cd to the upside on a weekly basis first level 4789 17170 in the nq 38,341 inside the Dow. And again, the Russell 2000 likely to target the 2600 area. Now, let's go switch over and take a look at the short term time frame charts. Those were the first set of panels that I accidentally popped up on the screen. Here's our 30 minute time frame charts. So just to try to understand what the message of the markets is here. And here, what I will share with you is I don't have anything that's really clear other than what comes from the Dow. The well, so the Dow itself, price pulls back. I don't have a topping pattern out here for the Dow, for the ES mini that uh, uh, sent price moving lower. Doesn't matter, price moved lower. And in the case of the Dow equity future contract, price held its TD9 breakout level at 35,983. The breakout levels for the NQ and the ES are well below where price got down to today. So nothing to look at there. The Russell 2000 got to its second breakout level. Uh, that has held, that second breakout level is priced at 23,9180. That is an area to be watching, in my opinion. So how does this all set up? How this all sets up right now, it's going to be about the end of day, where price closed in relationship to those oscillator and change lines for the ES and the NQ, and quite frankly, for the, for the Dow and the Russell 2000. And they'll help us figure out what its intention is, what their intentions are. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We get back from this break, we'll go answer a few questions that have come in by email. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so uh, I returned about uh, 45 minutes ago from my uh, my eye doctor appointment. I go every uh, three months, at least every three months. I suffer from something called diabetic retinopathy. It's a horrible disease. Uh, what it is, for those of you that don't know, it's bleeding that goes on behind the eyes, and it causes blindness. So uh, in my case, we've been fighting this for a couple of years now, and the doctor I go to, really renowned uh, doctor, his dad is actually the uh, Harvard guy. His dad is actually the guy that developed a technique still used today to detect this uh, disease and treat it. And the treatment is a horrible treatment, quite frankly. Uh, it's a grateful treatment if you've got it because what it does is it kind of uh, stops the uh, bleeding or tries to stop the bleeding so that your eyes, uh, eye vision doesn't get worse. It never is able to recoup what you've lost out there. But, um, uh, and, and, the, inject and, and the, the treatment is an injection into the eye. It is not, it's not a cheap, but I'm not there just yet. We're, you know, we're doing everything we can to try to stop it. But many of you know, I, I uh, uh, had a case of COVID in the beginning of August out there. So I was really interested to understand how has this possibly changed uh, my vision. And by the way, with diabetic retinopathy, because of the bleeding behind my eyes and so forth, my vision can change from moment to moment, day to day. I actually see it uh, take place. Well, I don't see it necessarily, but I, I see it through my actual vision, uh, see it uh, changing. And uh, in fact, I'll go there sometimes without my glasses and they'll, you know, do I you read the letters, all that stuff. And I'll come out with 2020 and you're like, how could that possibly be? Go back the next time. And I'm not even anywhere near uh, 2020 out there. But but in any event out here. Um, so so I want to understand most certainly whether how that impacted um, my vision. So he shared with me a story, kind of a sick story, quite frankly. Now, all that this guy does throughout the state of Florida, quite frankly, is deals with a cornea surgery, a diabetic retinopathy. I mean, that is his specialty. And uh, so he was telling me about a, uh, 
So I, I had shared with them obviously what I went through. And so the first thing that was kind of interesting, as, as many of you know, I've lost my taste and smell. Of course, I know most of you out there know I had no taste, that's okay. And, uh, and the good thing is, because I do this remote from uh, the office here at, in my house, you don't know whether I smell or I don't, but you know what I mean. So what he said is, it's what's really interesting is that he does have some, um, some observational studies on this because he's treating people all over the state of Florida. And what he's determined is those people that lose their taste and smell, their eyesight uh, tends to improve. He, I, when I, I walked out of there, they said, your, your eyesight has improved. In fact, don't come back in three months, come back in four months instead of three on this trip here. So that's fine, 30 days are gonna make a difference. But what he also said was, and this is the sick thing, is that those people that actually have, um, whether it's whether you get the full blown or you're asymptomatic and you don't lose your taste and smell. And if you do suffer, especially from like diabetic retinopathy, the disease either really impacts the eyes or it doesn't. And, and it seems to be the trigger is uh, whether you've lost your taste or smell. Maybe it's a gene or something. I mean, he doesn't know. He just knows uh, the study. There was a study that was produced. Now, this study, and here's where I kind of get to the sick part of it. The study went back and did autopsies on all kinds of people who, um, uh, you know, who, who passed away from COVID. They want to understand, this is where they're trying to understand what was the impact on the eyes. And what they were also hoping to be able to get out there was, uh, you know, a whole bunch of uh, corneas where they could use cornea transplants. And what he shared with me is because of everybody that's been marked as passing away, you know, in the hospitals uh, from uh, COVID or many of the people have, they can't use those corneas. They can't even come. And they have now a supply chain. If you wanted to get a cornea eye transplant right now, there's nothing on the market for the most part, in a really kind of a sick outcome of uh, of this. So, I, I, you know, if you or somebody has uh, diabetic retinopathy out there, you know, I, I suggest they go back, uh, you know, see their doctor as well and see how their vision is changing. And, and right now I'll say, I hope that if they did have COVID that they lost their taste and smell because uh, this guy, Dr. Tolentino, he, he, was, he was convinced that that was a, a real important uh, marker to help you understand what's going on out there. And even let's get to the uh, questions that have uh, come in, a couple of them. The first one coming in from uh, Tim. And Tim writes in, he says, uh, could you please take a look at DraftKings, the ticker symbol there, DKNG, that's what's up on my screen. It, it violated a previous TD9 count support level last week. So we'll go take a look at that. I believe it completed TD9 count to the downside on Friday. What do you think would be a good entry point for long position to hold for a few days to maybe a couple of weeks? So Tim, if we take a look at DraftKings right now, we can see that price is trading below the bottom of its daily and weekly profiles out here. What we see is price right now is testing the bottom of its weekly uh, weekly swing point for, that began the week of May 10th. Now that swing point's low is 39.93. The low so far today is 39.43. We're trading below that level. So what you first need to see is a test and rejection of that area. That's 39.93. Last week's volume on the way down, don't know what this week's was. Last week's volume was 75 million versus 151 million out there. So it's testing that level on light volume. The question is really this week. So that's what we see here. We're gonna switch over to my eight panel set of charts. Give me a moment just to set this up. This eight panel set of charts allows you and I to take a look at what's going on for multiple time frames. Because what we really wanna see here, when something gives us a bottoming signal, if it's on a weekly basis. So for example, and Tim didn't pick up on this, but on a weekly basis, uh, we have a, a TD9 count that is likely to form inside of DraftKings, either this week or next week. So when you see a bottom signal on a weekly basis, then you like to go to the daily time frame to see if you see any other bottoming signals. We like to go to shorter term time frames. Well, in the case of the daily time frame, let me just update this chart here. Um, price. Uh, so today is going to. So you are right, Tim. Uh, yes, uh, Friday was bar number nine. This is going to be the bar following bar number nine. I see a seventh wave signal out here as well. But price has also been moving lower with less relative energy. What I can't tell right now, because I don't know how I have my parameters set up, if this is just waiting for a candle bar close to extend that count or not. But either way, today could be a, a bullish, uh, could be a bottoming signal to go along with what we've looked at. But see what we would also see out here, Tim, is we would see these short-term time frames, all these along the bottom, even the one in the upper right, 195, each of these having roads, momentum indicator signals, what we would see is confirmed bottoms there. And that's what we don't have. And full disclosure here, uh, out of my scan of about um, five, 6,000 instruments, I believe this weekend, DraftKings was one of the instruments that showed up as uh, perhaps one of the number one bottoming pattern signals that are out here. Uh, but uh, as I shared to subscribers, we need to see 
uh, con confirmation of this before we'll enter this trade. So, Tim, you're looking at it. I'm looking at it. But I'm not willing to step into this until I get some type of confirmation of a bottom. So I would say stay tuned. Watch tomorrow. Uh, if we get a close below today's candle, whatever that is, that'll tell you that the TD9 count is not the pattern on a daily basis that's going to identify a bottom. So it's always nice to have confirmation. We don't have that just yet. It uh, depends on whether you're an aggressive trader or not. I would just sit tight and... Um, and um, and that's what I would do. So thanks so much for writing in. I hope that that helps you out. Nicholas writes in and Nick says, uh, hey, Steve, question about the Dow. OK, assuming that for 2021, we have a top for the Dow. So for 21, 21, a top for the Dow. I'm just going to first let me get over here. OK, so that's a, that's OK. So that, that's a potential assumption. I, I don't necessarily have that assumption, but okay. So assuming that, let me just read this question. Assuming that for the 2020, assuming that for 2021, we have a top for the Dow, what points would you use to calculate a normal 0 0.382 retracement? Do you think we still get a new high for 2021? Thanks for all you're doing your comments. Okay, so um, first, Nick, it will go, we're going to a breakout here, but just pay attention to the very bottom left panel of that screen out here. This is the Dow Equity Future contract. It has a breakout consolidation pattern that's in play that should take price to 37,363. 37,363. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we'll be right back. We'll finish off this one. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back. Hey, Nick, sorry about that. I didn't have the right charts on the screen right now, so I've left that out here. Bottom left, really each of these four equity future contracts have the same pattern, have the consolidation measure move breakouts that are in place. So I, uh, Nick, I am not in the camp that the uh, TD9 count tops that we have in place are the, the top inside of the Dow. And uh, not until we see some other elements get introduced to us would I uh, have that uh, signal. Granted, we do have TD9 count tops, but at this stage here, they've proven really to be nothing more than just a short-term pullback to support. Now, until those tops get taken out, um, you know, if the tops get taken out, we'll have more conviction behind the uh, conclusion that price is going to go reach at a minimum those levels. It's at a minimum. When you break out of a consolidation, the measure move is equal to or greater than the consolidation out here. So these levels, don't think like that's TV saying that's the be all to end all. That is not what I'm saying at all out here. Uh, your other qu your question also went into, so you're trying to calculate a 0 0.382 retracement out here. I think what you really need to do is to really kind of come back to this set of charts out here. So, and, and you can do the retracement levels yourself. I, I, you know, I, I don't know where you do the retracement levels from necessarily uh, to give you some type of change in trend signal or something along those lines, Nick. But what I do know is if we take a look at these uh, weekly task market profiles, those are the green lines. And I'm just showing you the bottom. I'm just showing you support that not until we see price close below these levels will you have any kind of a change in trend. So remember, these profile levels, they really provide, and the oscillator and change line, they provide us with, in the TD9 breakout areas, they provide us with natural areas for price to pull back to. Only when those levels get violated, where they indicate something um, different is going on, like a change in trend, which I think is what you're trying to get to out here. So in the case of the Dow or the YM out here, the level you're going to really be watching is 34,185. And you need to see two consecutive closes below that on a weekly basis in order to suggest that there is some kind of change in trend. So that's important to understand. What I'd really like you to wrap your head around, and I know maybe it's hard to do. I mean, many people looking at the economy in the U.S. and the world globally and figuring out that everything's going to heck in a handbasket out here. And that somehow maybe it's not going to heck in a handbasket because the stock market is doing it so well. These two things are two totally separate things out here. The stock market is nothing more than a, a way for us to try to understand where is money flowing into. It's nothing to do with the economy, so to speak, out there, or the health, or or not the health. But here when we take a look at, when we take a look at the economy, what we have to understand, or the market that is, the stock market, I didn't mean to say economy, this, we take a look at the stock market out here, what we really need to understand is where is their confidence? And one of the ways to figure out where confidence is, is to take a look at instruments like this. Here we've got the Dow, we've got the DAX, we have the FTSE, the Shanghai, I've got the S&P, the Nikkei, the Hang Seng, Australia, emerging markets, and we've got some commodities out here. But trying to understand where is it, because the investors, they, they, they can't hide from you and I. The data is here. It's just a matter of whether or not we want to go ahead and develop the data, interpret the data. But here what we're looking for is we see this here. In the case of the Dow, if you're invested in the Dow or have, this basically takes us back to the beginning of the year, the last 46 weeks. So it's not going to be right to the day of the beginning of the year, but close enough for our work. The Dow is up in terms of U.S. dollars by 19%. That pales in comparison to being up by 20%, 28% in euros and 32% in terms of yen. The Dow is out in front. There's no doubt that capital is flowing into the Dow. Has it totally concentrated itself in only the Dow right now or only the U.S. markets? The answer there is no. The DAX has a uh, uh, is, is not that far behind. It's up by 17% in U.S. dollars, 26% in terms of uh, euros. So we know that money is flowing into Germany. Money is flowing into the U.S. US. Uh, not so much. It's flowing in, but not as significantly inside the UK. When we take a look at the FTSE, the Shanghai for the year is only up less than 2%. Definitely not flowing there. In uh, the Australian index, where is my rate of change? Oh, my rate of change is uh, my rate of change is 13%. Uh, so similar to the FTSE. So no, Hang Seng down 6%. The NAKE up about eight. So, Nick, what I want you to understand is that uh, capital is flowing into the U.S. And, we, hey, look, we've had a lot of uh, corporations over the last many years out here take out supply of stock, right? They bought their stock back. Uh, and people, you know, complain about that, all that. But you have to understand supply and demand out here, if there's less stock that's on the market and we have global capital that is saying i've got uh, confidence inside wherever it has confidence in this case here we can easily make the case that is the us of a out there that when things really hit the fan 
wherever they might hit the fan, over in Europe or China or wherever, uh, that uh, capital will flee here. And, and the thing that's going to hit the fan or should hit the fan, uh, I said should hit the fan, uh, is when interest rates begin to uh, rise out here. And there's not too many people that are saying interest rates won't rise. And the problem with interest rates rising in the U.S., this is the problem is you've got central banks that have been the biggest buyers of their debt, so to speak, and uh, you've got negative interest rates, you've got uh, over over in Europe, you have trillions, I don't know, 17 trillion or so worth of uh, denominated debt in US dollars. So is if our US dollars getting higher, and we took a look at that during the uh, uh, during the uh, uh, one o'clock update, how the U.S. dollar has got a nice A to B equals CD to the upside. It's moving higher. Gold, silver moving higher. Not necessarily right now today, uh, but in general, they both are moving higher out there. That's another indication of uh, people having confidence in the U.S. dollar. Well, the problem there is just simply that you're going to need more of if you're if you got a debt that's dominating U.S. dollars in whatever your local currency is and it's falling compared to the dollar. Now you've got to even come up with more and. When you start to realize that not just you have to come up with more, that that whole thing is cratering and you have that investment capital, are you going to keep your money tied up in those bonds? No. And if you liquidate it, where are you going to put it? And so it really comes back to the U.S. So it's really important to understand that fundamental. So that's not a sort of a technical thing. It's, it's, it's a fundamental aspect. And if we take a look at it here, we have the same thing going on now, if I can get to that chart. We have the same thing going on now as we did back to the run up into the 2000 top. Here we're taking a look at the top portion of the screen here is the uh, Euro US dollar. And you can see that uh, it has been moving lower, not just uh, even since the 2008 high out here, but just coming back into the 2000 time period, back from 1995, we saw a huge move lower inside the euro. That was capital fleeing Europe. It was moving into the US. That capital moving into the US moved our stock market into that 2000 top, so to speak, that bubble that everybody calls a dot com bubble, somehow believing that that was the real thing that was driving price moving higher. That's a lie. Uh, it wasn't. It was capital fleeing Europe. And you can see here we have the same thing going on right now. It has been going on since 2008. If we took a look at the rate of change from the Dow of 2009 to where we're at, it's way out in front with regard to confidence in capital out here. So these are the reasons why I would caution you against trying to suggest that the uh, Dow or our markets here in the U.S. have formed some significant tops out there. It just doesn't line up with everything else that we're looking at. So I do hope that helps you out. Uh, I can see that we've got a caller on the line, but we're going to wait until we come back from this breakout here, which is about 20 uh, seconds from now. It's going to be Garo. We're going to take a look at ticker symbol QS. But in the meantime, right now, just uh, one last thing to look at, or maybe a couple things to look at out here. If we take a look at spot volatility, a key level to be watching today, no matter what, is that spot volatility, which is 1766. We're trading right now at 1678. Continue to trade below it. That puts some uh, wind at the sails of the back of the S&P 500 to suggest that it should move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNL. We get back to this break. We'll go out to Garrow in California. Take a look at ticker symbol QS. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at Quantum Scape. We're going to go out to Gar, who who is no longer, he's not in California now. He's at his second place, or maybe his first place, up in Alaska, I believe. Gar, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Good, and you, sir? Excellent. Now, are, are you up in Alaska? No, I'm in Yukon. I'm in White Horse. Okay. Uh, a white horse part of the uh, that I have a chunk, big ch I bought a big chunk of land when I worked at the uh, Alaskan pipeline in uh, in mid 60s, 1960s. Yes. They, I, I bought, yeah, I bought a more three, four hundred acres here in White Horse because uh, my taxes were so high. And yes. then I had to buy something, so I had payment. So uh, after I bought it, then I start raising uh, pigs here, pigs and uh, mountain goats and uh, caribou. Uh, so uh, I've been doing this for for very many years here. Uh, that's yeah, so really great. I, I come here about, about two three times a year. Uh, we come here for hunting and fishing, and I take care of the business and so on. And then I go back again to California. That's great. Well, folks, uh, you're you're in for a treat here because Garo's developed a unique system, a uh, proprietary system for him. Works really well out there. Uses uh, parabolic SAR. Uses a number of different uh, moving averages. And uh, so, Garo, we're we're happy to speak to you about QuantumScape. I believe that's what you called for. Currently trading at forty sixty nine. So, how can I best help you with regard to this? <clears throat> yes, I've been trading this uh, since uh, in, when it was around. 28 between 28 and 30 until it crosses that 200-day uh, simple moving average. Now I'm trying to, to find a, uh, to, uh, trying to find the main resistance. Okay. Uh, what, what I have here, it crossed the daily resistance. Was mine was? Oh, I don't know what is yours. I want to compare with yours. Mine sure. was 41 dollars and 41 cents. Uh, okay. And then uh, here I have two major at on two day resist two day um, the charting it is forty three dollars thirteen cents and forty six dollars and thirty seven cents and the three day chart is forty four dollars and one cent and forty eight dollars and twelve cents. I want to see that what is your major um, a major resistance and that uh, Tom the Mark. I don't have that system. I no want to see that when is the last one that you can see that something that is going to roll over. Sure. Um, I, I was long in the morning and uh, I I showed it today on ten minutes uh, where you see that it, the candle crossed the dot. It was forty two dollars and twenty one cents. I showed it there and still I'm in short and very soon I'm going to get out of it. 
but I want to see a major, a major uh, resistance if it's possible. Okay, so uh, first with regard to your 10 minute chart uh, that you went short on, if you were to ask me where would be the time to cover it, I would say right now. Now, the reason that I would say that is the very right hand panel of my chart, we'll come back to the bigger question, but since this is more pertinent to your existing trade and you're already considering uh, closing it out, the reason why I say that is because we can see that price is pulled back into the bottom of its bullish structured profile that appears to be holding. That's at 4056. Uh, now, maybe you don't close it out now, but if you see a move above the center of this profile, and that's where we're trading right now, that's out at 4075, odds favor a move up to to the 4148 level. That's nothing more than just take a look at its uh, TAS market profiles. And this is a bullish structured profile. So we would expect and anticipate this area to hold. So before I switch over to any other time frames or, or provide you with some additional information, any questions about the right hand panel chart, which is the 10 minute chart here for QuantumScape? No, I'm fine, sir, because okay. um, what I'm seeing that uh, some, uh, the, the stochastic is already below 25. So no, I think now is the time to get out. Um, yeah. And I made about um, close to two dollars. I, I have no problem with this. Uh, but uh, my, my main problem is to find a major sure. resistance that where do you see that uh, Tom DeMarc at your the top is the uh, one yeah. that we're going to curb. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep. So the next level then, the next level to the upside that I would be watching is 48.45. So <laughs> price has already taken out two uh, Tom DeMarc TD9 breakdown resistance levels. And that is a bullish signal. We don't have any kind of a topping pattern that is in place. Price is moving higher. It is doing it with less relative strength. That's only a problem if we were to see some type of bearish reversal candle form. But we don't have that now. We're not going to anticipate that that is going to form and it's until it forms. And so at this stage here, the next resistance level for you to look at is going to be 48.45. And as price approaches that area, perhaps you could call back in. We'll see what kind of patterns are going on in the daily time frame. Uh, because QuantumScape has only been trading for well, above that level, I take that back, um, it hasn't been trading for that long, it goes back to last September. On a weekly basis, the resistance level that I would have would be 51.57. So we have 51.57 and 48.45. And I would say, Garo, that is your resistance zone. And if price can clear that, this thing continues to move higher. It may continue to move higher, but those, those are areas to look for potential stalling points or possible topping signals or patterns. Any questions about yes. that information? Yes, now mine is 48.12. Uh, between Perfect. 44 and 48 well uh, very, very good no i don't see any topping stuff but um here i don't have that system that you have sure. that uh, tom DeMarc. i wish i had one i don't know where to get it uh, and how to add it to my um, uh, charting system but that that's a very excellent feature that i don't have it unfortunately i hope one day you will help me to uh, complete that system but i do appreciate your time thank you sir appreciate you it and talk to you soon you bet. That was Garo in California, a wonderful fella, just like everybody out there that's listening in as well. Uh, so let's go to our next question. I don't think, uh, oh, I take it back. We do have another caller on the line. It's Rich in Orlando. Hey, Rich, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good, Steve. How about yourself? Very good. Thanks so much for asking. And uh, the ticker symbol I think we're going to look at is, oh, uh, is what? I'm sorry. Uh, well, it's for Plantier. For Plantier. P L. PLTR. Got it. Okay. That's why I couldn't pull up what uh, you were asking for. So PLTR. Uh, I'll pull these up on my screens here. Uh, tell the folks uh, how I can best help you. Yeah, Steve. I mean, as far as I know, this is one of those companies, you know, that uh, basically gets a lot of money from the government. And they got a nice contract about three weeks ago. Okay. And it really kind of was moving up. And then all of a sudden, it looks like it fell out of bed. It did. But it looks like it's sort of bottoming out here at the, in the 22, 23 areas. I'm just I don't know, is that a pause before it goes lower, or does this thing maybe look like it came down to a breakout before and uh, maybe has some sure. possibilities going up again? Yeah, so here's what it did. So the day that it really fell out of bed, there's two days, but the, the day that was most concerning was the day of November the 10th. And the reason is because price closed below the bottom of its daily profile, which was at a level of 23.56. And we're still below that right now. What that did was that gave you and I a signal of a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. And Rich, the first price target of this A to B equals CD pattern would be $20.84. I would say that that um, pattern 
will remain in effect unless we see Palantir close above 2409. 2409 is the center of its bullish structure daily profile. Are you able to see us on Tiger TV? By any chance? No, unfortunately, take... I'm not. No, no, I'm oh. not able to read at the moment. But I'll go back and look later on and uh, Perfect. Uh, view the program. Perfect. So what you're going to watch there is you're going to look at that second blue line. It's on the left-hand side. When price closes below the bottom of a bullish structure profile, counter trend rallies, if that's all this is, Counter trend rallies will poop out, will peter out at 2409, at the 2409 level, and then continue to resume lower. If price closes above that, then I don't have a bottoming pattern, but it may have bottom. Hey, Rich, do me a favor, go into a break here. Hold on through the break. I want to make sure I answer your question there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back with Rich in Orlando in just a few. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. You want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage. The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. Hey, Rich, during that break, I went and looked at the intraday time period, just seeing if I could find anything that gave you and I a signal that maybe this is bottomed, and I couldn't find yeah. it. So I just fall back to the daily time frame. And on the daily time frame, uh, the oscillator and change line, that's Stevie's green red line, changed colors a few days ago when we had that big move to the downside. When it changes right. color, we typically see price and that line catch up to each other. I think that's all that we have going on here. That catch up would take us also into that 2408 ish area out here. 2408, 2409. So I would just be tight. I think the A to B equals CD pattern is the one to still keep our eyes on for Palantir. Okay? 
Okay, I appreciate that. Thanks a lot, Steve. You bet. Thanks for calling, and we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. Let's finish this off with a question from Susanna. Susanna wants to go ahead and take a look at MARA. So let's take a look at MARA, Marathon Digital Holdings. And I think she's just looking for, trying to get a feel for what it's communicating to us. So here what we can see, and this is a level to be watching. So Garo and I were talking, I think it was Garo and I, or it was just Rich and I about the uh, bullish structured profile. You close below it. Typically your, your counter trend move is to the center. Well, here we have the exact opposite. We have a bearish structured profile. And that profile level was tested on that big down day on November 10th inside of Mara. That level held, which was 64.75. Price is trading just below that right now. We're trading at uh, 63.91. So here's the deal, Susanna. If we see a close below 64.75, it's suggesting that Marathon Digital Holdings should pull back to the 55.41 level. Granted, you really need two consecutive daily closes below that level. But the first close is going to say, hey, this is a real possibility pulling back to 5541. I don't see any kind of significant tops or anything like that out here, but a pullback to uh, support certainly could be the uh, what's in order here. So 5541 is the area to be watching. That's if you get a close below 6475 today. Folks, stay tuned. You've got two more great hours lined up. Your favorite polar bear, David White. He's on with the Polar Trading Hour. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us on home from three to four. And I'll be back with you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. We're going to record tomorrow's show between 8 and 9. Please join me then. We'll make that show as pertinent as we can between the 1 and 2 o'clock slot. Have a terrific, a, a, a marvelous Monday, folks. We'll see you again soon.